I would like to present you with a glimpse of the future. <laughs> I, yeah, so, so disappointing humanoid robots are definitely going to be part of the future. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, because in, in my experience, when we think about what makes us humans human, we often compare ourselves and look at what animals or AI or robots, what they can't do. So as long as they fall over sometimes, we still have a reason to be. It's all good. Um, I, I built this thing, but before you take my word on anything I might say about technology, I should perhaps admit that I'm not a technology expert, and looking at it now, I realize it might have already been obvious to a few of you. Um, but I did have a question. I was wondering what would happen if we treated future technology with a kind of playfulness, experimentation, and joy, like we do, for example, in the arts. My name is Daniel Simu, and I'm a circus artist. And I'm going to use the next 10 minutes to try and convince you that we should be building robots for fun. And I'd love to show the kind of fun that we sometimes have together, maybe at the end. But for now, you'll have to sit here and wait for a bit. Thank you very much. Obviously, robots are more than just machines that can execute tasks. Also, they are to be considered sometimes creatures. They have behaviors that we can read into as mannerisms or characteristics. And that's something that artists can exploit. Um, I particularly like robots because they can do stuff. And I, all my life, I studied movement, mostly the movement of human bodies. But I wondered if I could expand upon my knowledge of movement by considering the movement of machines. Or in particular, I decided I want to do acrobatics together with a robot. There was a hurdle on the way, though. Um, you can't just go out and buy an acrobatic robot, so I had to build one. And in order to build an acrobatics robot, I needed to understand what even is acrobatics. So I was thinking about the kind of acrobatics I do with other people, and I realized I mostly interact with their hands and feet. So the interface of my machine was going to be hands and feet. I didn't really use their heads so much, so my robot also didn't need a head. And for simplicity's sake, I decided that elbows and knees, they were going to be overrated as well. But then came a second hurdle, which is that, um, yeah, I didn't know how to build a robot. I'm, I'm a circus artist, after all. But people come to the circus to be surprised and amazed. And one of the ways we surprise and amaze our audience is by showing them new things, by showing them innovation. People don't like to see the same trick twice. So actually, when I was a professional juggler, a big part of my job was inventing new tricks. So I considered if I could use my skill for inventing tricks to also maybe invent a machine. And the way that I invent stuff is what I call playful discovery. It's where you take the stuff you already have around and you play with them until you find something. It's a very low pressure way of inventing stuff because you accept whatever comes out. It doesn't work great if you have a very set list of requirements, but in my case, I didn't even know what a robot acrobat really was. So it was great for that. Um, where are we in my story? I have a discovery. Are we already there? Oh, yeah. It's really good to keep a little bit of uh, naivety, to not really plan everything, just like I'm doing right here. I made myself a very basic plan, a three-step plan to keep stuff simple. And step one was going to be to buy a mannequin. I went to the second-hand mannequin store. If you're ever in Utrecht in the Netherlands, I recommend you go. It's a strange experience to be around <laughs> 10,000 mannequins that stare at you. And then step two was to find a motor. And I discovered that windscreen wiper motors, like from a car, they're very strong, but also very cheap. So I bought four of those. And then if I had my motors and my mannequin, I figured I could do a handstand with my motorized mannequin. Easy as that. And it worked, actually. <laughs> so th there were a few more hurdles on the way. Like I had to actually also build a frame to house the components in and wire the motors to controller and adjust the angle of the hands so it worked for a handstand. But after two months of this hard work, stood next to me the world's first acrobot. Oh, well, stood. It didn't have any legs, so it wasn't really standing. But it did have arms, and it could do a handstand. And it was great, and it was beautiful, and people liked it, and people wanted to book the show, and then... And then it broke down. <laughs> yeah. After two shows, one of the arms fell off. And then when I tried to fix this, I also fried the little motherboard because ultimately it was designed not by an engineer, but by a circus artist. And I realized if I wanted to do more of this, I needed to learn how to be an engineer. But luckily, circus had given me another superpower, which is the skill of, well, learning skills. <laughs> and this is going to make me sound a little bit like I only just discovered about the internet. but. These days, you can learn everything online. Like You can learn programming and electronics. And there's a lot of YouTube videos about uh, design and 3D printing. And especially, these YouTube videos are great for learning how to build things. That's a resource that's really only became available in the last five-ish years. So 
yeah, I went down that rabbit hole and my skill for learning new skills is a method I call immersive obsession or obsessive immersion. It's, it works great for me, it's not for everybody, but as a juggler, for example, I would be throwing stuff around every three minutes of the day. I would go to every juggling convention that I could attend. I uh, fell, uh, no, what was I doing? I was, I have everything here, oh, I would have hobbies. I'm so obsessed with this juggling thing, but that my hobbies would be doing a juggling podcast, and I also moved to different countries because I realized that all the best jugglers, they lived in Berlin or in London, and I, I want to be part of that scene, but now, Cut all that because I was going to be an engineer. So instead, my immersive obsession led me to buying every electronics kit that I could find on AliExpress. Or I would uh, transform my house into a workshop. I would fall asleep every day watching those videos about 3D printing. And I even got myself a job at a university as a researcher in movement and interactive technology, all to gain the skills to be able to develop this machine. And luckily, along the way, I also met a few friendly engineers who became collaborators and designed some parts for me. But because I was still applying this playful discovery method, I didn't fully realize what I was going to get in the end. And when the robot first stood in front of me, by this time I had been fantasizing for nearly two years about the kind of tricks we could be doing. But instead I realized I wanted to shake his hand and I, I wanted to give it a hug. And it had gotten some kind of persona, some personality, some identity. And I realized I wanted more out of a stage partner than just doing tricks together. It's maybe hard for you to imagine because you've only seen it as this limp body. So maybe this is a good moment to try and turn it on. It's always a little bit scary to turn the robot on because I never fully know if it's going to work or not. I mean, it is not like a manual that I can consult if something goes wrong. In fact, um, one of the first times I turned this on, uh, this was in February this year. The robot is not that old. Um, it didn't work as planned. I have a video of this. Let's see if it... This, uh, yeah, so in February I turned on the, ro the robot. It did its trick. All fine until there. <laughs> Until, uh, yeah, that was not planned. This, uh, for the programs in the room, there was a memory overflow which caused the microprocessor to reboot, and in the process, it shut off all the motors. <laughs> not that great, but as an artist, I consider this to be a an, uh, an happy accident. Uh, mostly, no, not only because I wasn't actually hurt, the robot didn't kick me that hard, and the robot was fine, but most importantly, I had caught it on video, and... I posted it online, I shared it on Instagram, and the next morning I woke up to six million views. <laughs> people kept on sharing the video with their friends, but also people kept on watching long enough that the Instagram algorithm spread it around, it went viral, but that was not the best thing. I also, and this really happened within a span of two days, I had three emails in my inbox from TV shows that asked if I could recreate this moment in their studio because they thought it was so funny. <laughs> One of these TV shows was, uh, America's Got Talent, and I've been a performer all my life, but America's Got Talent is not an opportunity I get every day. So despite them wanting to record the show in March, and remember this was in February, it was a very short time, I had a broken robot that didn't work. I was working together with a dramaturg at the time, and we decided to just um, put all our stuff aside and focus completely on making the best two minutes we could make, write a choreography, make new tricks, learn the tricks, practice everything, get a costume, get the music, lights, sound, everything. We flew to Los Angeles to perform at America's Got Talent. This is uh, already recorded, so <laughs> thank you. If you want to see it, it's already on YouTube, so you can go after the show, after this presentation, you can watch it on your phone or whatever. For me, it was a good reminder that sometimes, even when you're not fully ready, it's a good thing to just go out there and present your work, because maybe it becomes ready in the process. But this act that we performed there, it's only two minutes long, so I don't, do we still have some time left for Because if you want, we can um, do it here on stage. Where do you want to see it? In that case... Let me prepare this, and then I'll put this aside. And I hope that in the process of showing you our little routine together, you also get to understand why it's worth building robots for fun.
Maybe, maybe as a closing thought to all this, I don't think robots ever could or should replace humans, obviously. But think about this. How could a robot perhaps make your job more interesting? Because this one surely excites me. Thank you.